Hi everyone, welcome, welcome back to whatever this corner of the internet is going to turn out to be. It doesn't matter. I'm just happy that you're here. I'm not going to waste any more time with an intro because quite frankly, we need to get to business. Court is in session and there is a case to be made. If you've been around long enough on this channel, you'll know that ancient myths, legends and stories are among one of my favorite things to talk about, especially so the ones that seem less palatable with the postmodern perspective. The reason I draw so heavily on these stories is for their consistency, specifically their consistency in addressing the human condition. The ones that persist at least in the bones of their narratives across multiple religions, cultures, and time periods, like for example iterations of the Great Flood, are the ones to pay attention to, not for believing necessarily in whether or not they actually happened, uh, which is why your religiosity or otherwise doesn't matter in these discussions. It's actually quite great that everyone can engage, but for the fact that they are powerful predictors in human behavior and motivation. I present two theories before the court today, and let's hope by the end of this video, we can all still be friends. Real simple. God runs the world. I am God. I run the world. <laughs> <laughs> Let me make that very clear. <laughs> all right, so let's get into it. So in the ancient biblical tale, Nebuchadnezzar, a powerful king of Babylon, stands as a figure of pride and hubris. His reign is marked by conquest, wealth, and the construction of magnificent monuments. Yet beneath the veneer of, you know, grandeur is a heart swollen with arrogance. The story unfolds with Nebuchadnezzar boasting of his accomplishments and attributing his success solely to his own prowess. He fails to acknowledge the role of divine providence or, you know, the contribution of his own subject. Think about how the internet gets so outraged when a you know a celebrity sorry, or an influencer actually attributes their success solely to their own hard work, which no one denies. But it is you know it's difficult for the influencer's audience to swallow when the influencer does not attribute any credit at all, you know, to their own viewers in contribution to their success. Anyway, I digress. As punishment for his prideful defiance of the divine order, Nebuchadnezzar is visited by this harrowing vision. He has a dream, essentially. He dreams of this great tree, and this tree reaches to the heavens. It symbolizes his lofty aspirations and towering ambition. Yet, before his eyes, the tree is felled, its branches stripped bare, and its leaves scattered to the winds. So, seeking interpretation, Nebuchadnezzar turns to the prophet Daniel, who delivers this really sobering message of divine judgment. I'll read it directly to you because honestly whenever i read this I, I i literally i get chills this is what is decreed for you king nebuchadnezzar your royal authority has been taken from you you will be driven away from people and will live with wild animals you will eat grass like the ox seven times will pass by you until you acknowledge that the most high is sovereign over all kingdoms of the earth and gives him to anyone he wishes now i'm sure you're wondering catherine what, what, why are you? Why, why are you telling us this story? What's the point? I have, a, I have a reason for this. What I want to do here is underscore the pattern of deliberate self-humiliation, sabotage, and embarrassment. The cringed repulsion I get when I observe some of Ye's latest tendencies would probably be similar, terrifyingly similar, actually, to at that time period, you know, seeing a grown man insist on parading like a fool and eating his own feces. Both Nebuchadnezzar and Ye exhibit patterns of behavior that defy rational explanation, veering between grandiosity and self-destruction and seemingly reckless abandon. There also, and this is what really, really disturbs me, seems to be like this aspect of inevitability to their actions. It's as if, it's as if they're almost driven by forces beyond their control. I don't know if you see what I'm saying, but let me, let me try to put it this way. Both remain in certain madness, but it's a madness that favors pity and, and excuse excuse from the outside observer because clearly the understanding the common understanding not just now but at that ancient time is that someone making decisions while not you know clearly all there you know in their own mind shouldn't be criticized too harshly but also for as much as he appears to be a victim he also seems to be so aggressive in doing exactly what will indulge him further into victimhood the question though i think that really does beg and aggravate the culture is this should characters like this even be allowed to make their case should there exist a tolerance for views considerations reception and in some cases denouncement of their express opinions as an offense to those within our society 
society that don't deserve it in our court of public interest should they even be allowed to take the stand so i i've been contemplating this a lot and there have been many a discussion from both the quote left and right side of the political aisle although as i have said in previous videos and you're more than welcome to go and check those out i do believe that these distinctions are a bit too reductive in embracing the full scope of political thought you won't hear traditional talking points from this channel i'm sure you're used to that by now but um the answer i came to isn't so much a yes or no kind of situation as much as it is a question so should characters like this be allowed to exist should people like kanye in a metaphoric sense ever be allowed to quote take a stand present his opinion make a case in aggravation to the interests of offense hate and explicit falsehoods should we allow this to have presence acknowledgement well how will we find the snakes in the sand if we don't let me explain. Aggravating characters, I think, within the general scope of thought, like Ye, are incredibly powerful. Not because they need to be praised or believed, but because they force us to interrogate what it is we believe and why we believe it. Have you ever noticed how, especially so online, when the environment becomes claustrophobic with similar thought, similar interests, similar irritations for lack of a better word people just complaining all the time and finding commonality in that complaint the conflicts the pettiness the uh the issues that arise within those specific groups are so trivial and it seems like people become angry for the sake of just itching for a fight you then see some who you feel you know there's no point in engaging at all in you know in entertaining substanceless debate because quite frankly it's 8 a.m you need to have breakfast you need to complete an assignment answer messages email where the point is there are a thousand and one better things to do than fight with karen264 on facebook <laughs> the distinctions between us become trivial muddied and lines of genuine outrage and being too chronically online merge but then in comes an outlier in comes someone so extreme yet somehow has a history of being sympathetic to both sides of the aisle that he forces distinctions in opinion once again he does this because those who wouldn't ordinarily have an opinion and validly so are suddenly forced to interrogate what they believe and why they believe it and i'll tell you why they do this because you are exposed as too easily manipulated to either opinion if you don't you have no established principles no convictions and so you can be controlled the rest among us all are similarly exposed for what we are and what truly convicts us. See what I'm saying? An aggravator disturbs the grass and causes the snakes to shiver. Would you have known how many surround you if not for that disturbance? Well, you might say, well, of course I can, you know, I can just ask them. You talk every day, <laughs> you know, uh, which is which is valid. Uh, I would probably respond the same way. But what is the distinguishing characteristic of a snake? they lie they lie still in the grass and you know you can't see them but also literally they'll never tell you the truth as in like what really convicts them until it really matters as for the rest those you know who have no convictions well they're probably the worst and most pitiable of us all because they are puppets in either of our agendas and they are too spineless to choose a master or in some cases an oppressor i will see you next time you make sure to take care and honestly just have a great rest of your day so you take care and goodbye